Caution, the Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. And, besides that, he's really weird. Welcome to the Mark Gunger Show with international marriage speaker and author of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, Mark Gunger. This is your source for practical, down-to-earth marriage advice without all the over-spiritualization or romantic nonsense. And now the host of the Mark Gunger Show, Mark Gunger. And the crowd goes wild with delirious joy. They've joined the Mark Unger Show, the show that deals with all things concerning... Knowledge. Indeed. I'm your host, the one, the only Mark Unger. Joining me is always the very lovely Lady Diane. And, of course, yes. the amazing Philip James so. Gunger. Engineering the show, as always, the very talented but eerily creepy <laughs> Timothy Robert Ray. Pushing buttons, twisting knobs, and trying to stay awake during this incomprehensibly, immeasurably boring show. This is the show that handles your marital challenges relational conundrums and dating dilemmas that you can email to us at ask, A-S-K, at markgungor.com. <clears throat> yes, my dear? This little article attempts to answer the question, why do some new marriages fail so fast? Why do fools fall in love? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, they say whether a new couple will stick together or not often depends on why they decided to get married in the first place. If the reason behind their decision to get married is fueled by the desire for an expensive wedding, <laughs> st- stardom, like who gets married for stardom, I guess. I do. Oh, I, guess, I suppose you would. It's all about me. Romanticized notions of finding a soulmate or imagined security in marriage, they are likely to be in for a speedy separation. Secure. Why would you throw security in marriage? In imagined that? security. What does it mean, imagine? There is security, security in, in a marriage. marriage. That's all- Maybe it's mm, uh, unrealistic expectations of security or something. I don't know. I just wouldn't throw security in the same category as those other No, I wouldn't either. Right. Many young couples join the marriage bandwagon under the illusion that it will fix their personal or relationship problems. However, they <laughs> discover that marriage is just the beginning of a fresh, more complex process of relating. Run up again. They think marriage will fix their relational problems. Their personal or relationship problems. Yeah. Like if we just get married, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll fix it. If we yeah. just get Isn't married. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I mean, these people date people, and they can't stand them when they're dating. And they need marriage counseling when they're dating, and yeah. then they go ahead and get married. Yeah. And that's the craziest thing. Because getting married will fix it. <clears throat> no, no, no. I always tell people who come to me who are dating, asking for marriage help, I always say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Even if I had the answer, I wouldn't give it to them. <laughs> if you're already, listen to me, you people. So you single people dating, y'all crazy. Good grief. Think it through. You should actually enjoy each other more than ever right now while you're dating. Then you get married, and then you irritate the snot yeah. out of each other. If you, if you can't already stand each can't other stand now. each other. Seriously? So what is supposed to be the best? You need marriage counseling. You need relationship help when you're yep. dating? You are nuts. Break it off and move it on. It only gets more, as they say, complex. Oh, my God. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, right. They say the biggest issue is whether a new young marriage can tolerate the process of disillusionment <laughs> when the reality <laughs> sets in. The central question so what is... what do they think happens? What? What do they think happens? What do you mean? When they get married. What, 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 what do they think magic happens? Because you're saying it's a problem of disillusionment. Yeah. I mean, I talk they about They think this. it's something that it's not. It's like people who... Like uh, unending If you're going to buy a happiness. car yes. and you're convinced that car... As such gas, gas yes. mileage, you only have to fill up once every 10 years. Yes. And then you get stuck yes. by the side of you're going to be really upset. Yes. <laughs> because you're an idiot. <laughs> it's the false expectations. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to figure out what they think happens when you get married. That's not... What, what magic? What do they think? I think it's tied to feels. Pixie feels, does. I think they're the going feels, to feel different. The or they're going to feel, you know, it's like getting Just because a, they're married, they'll feel different? Getting a gym membership. Man, if I get the gym membership and the brand new clothes, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. feel like I want to go and work out every yeah. single day. Yes. Yes. Yes, we all know that works. Yeah. Great. <laughs> no, you never <sighs> feel like it. Well, and then, then it you must be. You still work it out? I am. Are you? Twice a week. Lifting those weights. He kicks my butt. Good grief. And yep. then because you don't feel like it, well, then it's the gym's fault. 
Mm. It's this gym. You know what? Oh, I should really try the if program was, that yeah. so-and-so's doing. The other gym and, looks cooler. They yeah, have better equipment oh, over I'd there. I'd like to go there. I, yeah. Their staff seems friendlier. I think yeah. I'd like that. Yeah. Jim oh. Hoppin. I get it. <sighs> all right. They say the central question is, can the new couple face up to the limitations that all long-term relationships have to go through and the deflation of the perceptions they had about marriage? That's it. It's the unrealistic perceptions and expectations. Yeah, I know. That's what they say. We're natural all the time. That's it. Anyway, that. all right. Use your brain, people. <laughs> Think it through. Mm-hmm. Now, for those of you who are already married... <laughs> We will now offer advice. Answer your to the emails. the rest of you. The rest of you, we don't care. <laughs> Get a clue. Marry someone you actually like, you numbskulls. If you can't stand them, you're yeah. arguing, yelling, and screaming, why would you marry the person? I'll tell you why. The girls want to marry because they're already having sex with this guy, and sex makes them crazy. And they, and they f- do think that marriage will fix it. Oh, Look, that if we're he- if we're together all the time and we're just doing things together, they do. They think there's you know something the, magic that happens in the matrimony that will make things go away. You know the the, the go to thing that you, people used to think would fix marriage? Having children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's have a baby. It'll fix it. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yep. You don't hear much of that anymore. No, not much. So, Every now and then. All right, we will take a break and be back with your emails right after this. Attend Mark's Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage event. Visit LaughYourWay.com for upcoming dates and locations. Oh, Mark Unger back. <laughs> you're on, you're on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here to talk about Transition One, a transition program for young men and women, Christian young men and women, coming out of high school, taking a one-year off to put God first in their lives before they start in college and career and everything else. I understand, and I, especially those who are into sports, that's not much of an option for them. I'd even challenge that. I'd, I'd just slow down, man. Everybody's so hurried to rush their kids off into college to make money, 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 money. And then they're shocked when they're in their 30s and 40s and their lives are falling apart and ending in divorce and their kids come home pregnant and everything else. Oh, what did we do wrong? Really? How about you slow down a little bit? You put them through college, they put them, or high school. You say, well, they're good Christian kids. Yeah, but all they've done is live off of your faith. They're, uh, what's that word when you're uh, drafting, when you're behind another mm-hmm. car? They're, you know, you get behind a, another no, Race car drivers do this. Mm-hmm. They get behind another car because they draft, because the other car's taking the, uh, the resistance of the wind, mm-hmm. and they ride along until they get their chance to break out. Your kids, by and large, good Christian kids, I've been drafting off of your life. You and dad are the devout Christians. You bring them to church and stuff. Now you're just going to throw them out on their own without a chance for them to really develop their own faith? I don't think it's a good idea. Take a one-year program like Transition One uh, here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, and we teach them how to really focus on life, how to make decisions, how to plan financially, how to balance a checkbook. It's amazing how many of your kids don't even know anything about <laughs> balancing much of anything. Uh, how to make decisions about life and marriage and love and dating and all these things. We spent time. It's not a Bible college. We spent time for several months in the first part of the program just teaching them the basics about life and giving them opportunities to serve. They need to learn to serve. The last three months of the program uh, is we send them to, they pick a place, we've got missionaries around the world that take them in, they're safe places, where they get to go in and serve. And it's not just a one-week vacation-like missions trip. This is real missions work where they go and they live with these people for three months and they learn not everywhere in the world has Wi-Fi. They learn not every place in the world has high-definition TVs. They learn not every place has McDonald's. It teaches them to do life. They will be forever changed. Take one year. Put God first in their lives. Go check it out, transition1.org. We're back on the Mark Unger Show, talking about love, marriage, and relationships. Just before the break, we were talking about these people who get married, thinking that'll fix their relationship problems. But that one of the old go-to uh, things in marriages that were trouble: well, let's have a baby, and uh, and that you know could have some problems as well. Although we were talking during the break, in a way that used to kind of work. Mm-hmm. And one of the main reasons it works is because of what it does to the man. 
<laughs> it jerks the slack out of him. The two most transformative events in a man's life is one, marriage, and second, becoming a father. That's what really turns a man, a boy into a man. By the time you hit that, you have, you know, because your whole world changes. Mm-hmm. And it gets worse. So I think to some degree... <laughs> There's some truth to there it. There is some truth to it. Mm-hmm. We don't advocate <laughs> procreating because you can't stand each other. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it does have a, a positive effect, particularly yeah. on men. That's when they start working harder. They get more focused. They get serious. They quit goofing around. Most of the time. I mean, <laughs> Most of the time. There's, no, there's some still, problems that I you know, don't want to bring a child into thinking that, oh, it'll save it. Yeah. It'll make him grow My up. husband's an axe murderer. Let's have a baby. We'll fix it. Yeah. That's probably not going to help. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. Okay, the first email today says, Pastor Mark, can I stop doing my wifely duties, cooking, cleaning, caring for his stuff? I guess yes, those wifely email. duties. Next, <laughs> can I stop doing my wifely duties? Sign Debbie Gunger. <laughs> to, to try to get his attention back on me instead of his hobby. He spends 95% of his time out in the shed and out in the field flying his remote airplanes. Oh, I like remote airplanes. I got I mean, that, is, that is my mom. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it is Debbie A couple Gunger. years ago, it probably could have been when he was high into it. She says, I am a stay-at-home wife for, of 50, uh, 58 years old. We have been married nine years, both been married before, so it's a second marriage. We are followers of Jesus, although my husband does not read, go to church, or tithe anymore. I guess read his Bible. He is on workman's comp <laughs> For he's a back a pretty, injury. Pretty devout Christian, then, is yeah. what you're saying. So, but he's not incapacitated, she uh-huh. says. I feel like I'm dying on the vine. And oh, did I mention we have no sex at all? Oh, you did not. I've gotten to the point of giving up and wanting to move to the spare bedroom. So do I move out of our bed and can I stop doing his clothes and food to snap him into being more attentive to me in our marriage? Uh, she said, P.S. just bought your book, Beatitudes. I'm reading it together when we go to bed at the same time. We're in chapter five. I am having so much trouble being nice when I am so neglected and the airplanes get all of his attention. <laughs> you know what? I mean, a lot of people disagree with me on this. I, I think absolutely. I, I agree with her 100%. I think I don't understand any of y'all. Men and women, I've talked to both. Their marriages are a disaster. They're married to a spouse that is by any measure completely out of their ever-loving minds, way out of bounds on their behavior and stuff, and yet they are told, you know, the whole <clears throat> war room mentality, <laughs> just pray about it, through, just be nice. And I'm telling you, it, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. Now, some people say, that's not true. It doesn't. I'm telling you, overwhelmingly, it does not work. And here's a book that I want to do, and I thought I'd get it done this year, and it's right, I'm going. <clears throat> Actually, I'm into three other books right now. <laughs> Halfway you're, through. You're writing three at the same time right uh, now? Well, help me finish off there. One, one is a companion book to the uh, singles, but for men. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're finishing up that one, 125 things. Uh-huh. I was just producing that one. And then we're doing a companion book to Treat Him Like a Dog, where it's Treat Her Like a Sports Car. Oh, uh-huh. so and and actually going very fast. I'm actually halfway yeah. through that already. Nice. So you know. Anyway, one of the books I wanted to do was uh, in uh, defense of confrontation, mm-hmm. because if you go to 99 percent of the pastors out there and you ask them that question, you just ask them, dear, they'll say, no, 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 just keep doing it, just be nice, love they him into it, it. Submit, 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 submit. And <clears throat> the problem that I have with it is. Uh, they ignore all the parts of the Bible that talks about confrontation. What did Jesus say? You go to a person who's acting badly. Strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out, okay? Someone in the uh, uh, church is acting badly. You confront them. Uh, one guy was real bad. He said, man, turn him over to Satan, kick him out of church. I mean, bad. Jesus said, or Paul wrote, says, you got someone in the church who's sexually immoral. You know he's sexually immoral. Don't have anything to do with him. Don't even need lunch with him. Don't even have a meal with him. Well, what about love? I'm telling you, that's what the Bible says. It was called confrontation. Now, some of these very same people and Christians who don't like this thought, uh, the only way to get through to them is ask them, what would you do if your pastor was doing that? Because the same verse that says you should submit to your husband, same verse that says you should submit to your pastor. But there's not one of these rascals out there because they all go to these congregational (laughs) churches Mm -hmm. where inmates run the asylum. Can't stand that. Or I don't know how y'all do that. But anyway... uh, and they all would have a fit. If their pastor came in drunk, if the pastor wasn't doing his job, wasn't visiting people, not reporting on the finances, I mean, you guys would kick him out so fast. Really, whatever happened to submit to your pastor? Well, we can't do it. Yeah? Well, the same rules apply in the home. This idea that a man or a woman, and I've talked to both. Most of them are usually women who have bad acting guys. Mm-hmm. But lately, I've had a run of guys that... 
It's have the way hor- it is. But there's the real, these real peaceful people, and they just can't confront stuff. Mm-hmm. And as long as you can't confront stuff, they're just going to keep stomping on you and use you as a mat. I would do the same thing in your home that you would do if it was if he was the pastor of your church. Y'all would confront him. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, absolutely. i tell you what, what happened in my home. I do what this guy's doing. My wife absolutely stops doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And gets my attention. You're out and flying t- those airplanes. And that's all There's you're no doing? There's no supper. There's no clean clothes from Mrs. There's Gunker. There's nothing. No. Uh, and you confront it. What, what you're doing is by not doing that, you're avoiding the confrontation. The problem is some of y'all, she says, been married for nine years mm-hmm. doing this. I don't know how y'all do I really don't. I really don't. I don't understand it. I wouldn't tolerate for two weeks what these people do. I wouldn't tolerate for a week. Mm-hmm. And also my spouse tells me, we're not going to have sex anymore. Really? I'm not going to be writing some nitwit pastor in Wisconsin <laughs> in nine years saying, oh, what should I do? Yeah, Man, there would be hell to pay. But the thing of it is, is that they don't know what you're saying about there being hell to pay. They All they hear is, just keep praying, just keep loving him, just keep serving him, just keep submitting, and they don't know any different. Yeah, well, again, look what the Bible says. Look what Jesus said. Everywhere else, when there's really bad behavior, the prescription is confrontation. I argue that the church is not different than the home. And a lot of these same pastors would say, oh, yeah, the, ch- the home is uh, living out of the church. A bunch, of, they're <laughs> a bunch of hypocrites. They don't really believe that. Because if the husband acts badly, it's always still, we'll just submit. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. How come you don't do that in your church? Well, the elders would call a beating, and we would confront this pastor. Call a beating? A beating? We'll call, call a, a beating. beating. <laughs> They'll bring him in, and they'll beat the <laughs> snot out of him. We're going to call a beating. <laughs> we're going to beat our pastor and get him in. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I, I just don't understand this nonsense. Mm-hmm. These people put him. No, I think absolutely you should confront him. You'll get his attention. I'll tell you that. And the fact that he hasn't touched you in years. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Why do you girls mm-hmm. do this? I would, in fact, I would tell him, look, I'd move out. That's me. Or I wouldn't move out. I would just go on a vacation for a weekend. Don't tell him. Just leave. Just leave. That's what I would do. And you know what he'll do when he comes home? Don't do it when he's there. Mm -hmm. You leave when he's at work. You pack up, go to a nice hotel, take his credit card, get a massage, have a nice time. And the first night he comes home, he will panic. He will freak. He'll call you, where are you? Where are you? You can't just leave. I said, listen, if you're not going to be a husband to me, if you're going to ignore me, you're not going to make love to me, you're crazy. I'm not playing this Mm -hmm. game. And it'll always jerk the slack out of him. 99% of the time, they all cave. They all cave. But... These girls won't do it. They won't do it. And they go to their Christian friends. Oh, no, just to be just hang in there. And that's why these people's marriages keep stinking. They refuse to follow the biblical truth, which is confrontation to bad behavior. And instead, we have all these, you know, war room movies and all these Did Christians. y'all ever see that movie, by the way? Yeah, yeah Pete. You know, Did you? No. I just read about it. <laughs> just, it ticks me off. I should watch it. So you should watch it. it. You're not watch afraid. I'll be like, ah, oh, wasn't that I'll bad. get so angry. You should watch it. All the stuff I've read on it makes me mad. You, but you should watch just it. Just don't confront. Just pray. Even if he's a this and he's looking into porn and doing Just stand. And, really? I, they don't do that with their pastor. That's how it ticks me off. Oh, no. They if don't the t- pastor does it, if someone in the church, the church Brings down the hammer. Why? There's no that's, praying for the pastor. There's kicking the pastor out on his bum. Absolutely. That's all they do. But that's biblical. You right. confront bad behavior. But they won't bring it into the home. Yeah. They're a bunch of, they're inconsistent in their thinking. Yeah. And it's bad advice. Yeah. I promise you, if my wife would have never confronted me and I did whatever I want, I would be a disaster today. Absolutely unmitigated disaster. That but redhead he would be more of knows a disaster how to get my attention. Already is. Hey, we don't play those games. And vice versa. We just, you know, yeah. no, man, we, we confront very quickly in my house. As a, consequently, we try to behave ourselves. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Stuff just tries me. I got to do a book on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody would buy it, but it's just, I don't, it makes me so angry. Mm-hmm. They believe it in the church because they, they know what the Bible teaches mm-hmm. about, but they refuse to take the teachings of the Bible and apply it in the home. They say they do it, but they're full of it. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely full of it. And they over spiritualize this. Not oh, I was at a conference, or, or some people came from a conference. That, we were just at this marriage conference. They said that sex was the highest form of worship to God. Excuse what? Me? Who makes up this stuff? When I'm having sex, I ain't worshiping Jesus. <laughs> and if and if that's true, then how come? I guess we're not worshiping in heaven. 
Because Jesus says there's no sex in heaven. Well, they're not doing the highest form of they're worship. Not the highest form. And Paul, Paul, poor Paul, he never really worshiped God because he was single. Not the highest form of oh, worship. Christians listen to this thing. Oh, yeah, bro, marriage. So they make marriage stuff that it isn't. That's they, actually very creepy. They turn it into something God never intended. <laughs> to me. They over spiritualize it. And when it comes to confrontation of things that should happen, they give it an exemption. They don't apply the teachings of the full Bible in the home. And that's why y'all are so jacked up. And now I'm ticked off. Take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Have a marriage dilemma? Email your questions to ask at markgunger.com and Mark can answer them during one of our shows. We're back on the Mark Gunger Show, talking about love, marriage, and relationships. Hey, you know, I'm going to the Czech Republic. You are? In July. You are? I am. Check it out. Check it out, <laughs> all you Czechs out there. Wow. Check man. it out. I bet you there's a lot of hot Czechs there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you were getting beat up on Facebook yesterday. I was? Yeah. For what? Using some... Chicky terms. Because I said old lady. old lady. Old lady. Oh, lady. You referred yeah. to the guy oh, whose wife came out of the hot tent as his well, old lady. He wasn't exactly respecting the lady when he's thinking maybe I'm going to kill oh, her. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, there was my, a little flurry. On, give me a favor and I'll kill the old lady. They were not appreciative of no. your Just derogatory one, terms. No, it was one twitty lady. I know, but and then the other ones start down. weighing in. Oh, yeah. they're just a bunch of psychos. Yeah. <laughs> they put a couple of things in the last week. I was going to go back and look so how many unlikes you had. <laughs> It is to one's glory, the Bible says. Listen to me, you Christian, especially you girls that get offended about everything. What's the matter with you? It is to one's glory, the Bible says, to overlook an offense. But they never overlook an offense. Oh, I know. Every little thing. Oh, I don't like that we said that. And I like that word. Just really, just go away. They really didn't like your article about men going to prostitutes. That It wasn't my article. No, no, the one you posted. Sorry. I posted you it. Posted the, the, it. Uh, the point of the argument is that men are looking for something. Most surveys say that the guys who do this said if they could get the same kind of uh, attention from their wives, they would much rather be with their wives than with a prostitute. And prostitutes will say this all the time. That's not the first time they have seen articles right, like right, that. Right, right, right. It's one of the common things. Prostitutes always laugh and say, man, if these girls would just – you know, pay attention to their husbands, we'd all be out of business. But they don't. So I think that's a good point. They think all matter. Oh, because oh. talking about prostitutes. And oh, just, oh, just look. Again, they look for offense. What do you got? Um, it's a, a mother writing. She says, our daughter, who is 18, just had a heartbreaking breakup. Her, that said boyfriend, had been in like, she says, for about three years, dating for just a little over a year. In, had been in like? In like. Not in love. They had been in like. Oh, good. Got pretty. it? Got it? Uh, she says they talk pretty seriously about the future. We are very supportive of their plans. And then two weeks ago, my husband and I received a text that he said he needed to talk to us. He came over and told us he was ending it with our daughter. His reasons were she needs to grow in her faith. I need to focus on my career. And she's too emotionally attached. He, she says we were shocked. He let her know his plans. And of course, we spent the next few days helping her process. And this child was in pieces. Uh-huh. She's still very confused as he cut off all communication and said God told him to do it. <laughs> they both uh, said that Holy they have crap, these people. Both said they've right. not been physical, so uh-huh. they have that going for them. What uh-huh. advice would you give her for moving forward? She sees him at church and he is flying high now that he has his freedom because he used God as a scapegoat. She has questioned why God would say something like that to him and not her. God didn't say that to him. Him. First of all, y'all stop that. These people are so spiritual, these people. It's the Christian version of it's not you, it's, it's me. me. But they you say know. it's God. Yeah, it's God. God told me they're so spiritual. These same people can't keep they can't pay their own bills and keep their lives together. And I uh, just I have no patience for it. I'm I will guarantee you God did not tell him any such thing. All right? But why do y'all freak out about stuff like this? I don't understand. If somebody dumps you because they don't want to be with you, let him go. It's like I, like these pastors who get all upset because someone leaves their church. Who was it? This guy who's causing all this trouble. Why well, are you glad he left your church? Mm-hmm. I am happy that the people who caused all kinds of trouble in my church in the past have gone away. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go along. <laughs> 
Be, yeah. be warm and filled. You should think of it in terms that she has been spared. Spared. She has been spared. Not dumped, not hurt, not heartbroken. She's been tell spared. Her, it, he probably would have done this to you after he married you. Thank God it happened now. Mm-hmm. Just move on. It's going to hurt. That's what happens. All right? And another reason why, how long were they dating? Uh, a, a year, <clears throat> about a year. Oh, good. A little over a year. Good. So that's right on my time schedule. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly fine. Can you imagine what it would have been like if she would have dated him for five years? Oh, sure. Like some of these stupid Oh, well, they probably would have had sex by that and point. And then dumped her. And mm-hmm. now she'd really be a mess. A year, he doesn't want her after a year. That's that's the deal. It's dating. He wasn't married to her. Well, they talked about the future. Well, fine. So what? He wasn't married to her. He finally decided after looking at your daughter, he didn't want her. Good. Have him go away. Because I'm sure there's a lot of other guys who would love to be with your daughter. All right? So just encourage her. It'll be fine. It sounds to me like she's the parents more upset than the daughter. No, well, they said the it sounds like this guy pooped all over her. Uh, oh. It's you need a fix. You're not spiritual enough. Yeah. And so God That's told true. me to get out of it. It's like, pfft. Yeah, just good. Loser. Go That's away. Exactly. Go you don't, away. You don't want a guy like that for your son-in-law? Nope. You know how many husbands do that to their wives? Oh. You're not of this. You're not of that. Yeah. And then they're in hell for the next 50 years? Don't do it. You're free. Just start over again. She'll heal. It'll be fine. All right. See you right after this. Caution. The Mark Hunger Show contains adult content intended for an adult audience. Oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Here comes those blues. Here come the blues. You know what to do. Send us an email at ask at markhunger.com and we'll give we'll do our best to answer your relationship questions. What do you got? Jimmy's new record's coming out April 17th. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I can't cool. wait to hear it. Okay, good. Okay, next email. She says, we've been divorced a little over a month. Mm-hmm. We had been married for eight years. No children. We do have two dogs, which we love dearly, and he does have visitation rights to the dogs. <sighs> she says, go ahead and laugh, but you have to be a dog person to understand. <laughs> so, because of the dog visitation... It allows for him to come over. Uh We also communicate over phone and text messaging. It's almost like it was when we were separated. He's the one that filed for the divorce. I want to try to continue. I wanted to try to continue to work on our marriage. It was painful for me. I'm trying to rebuild my single life. She says he is flirtatious in our conversations. He has been very forward and seductive about sex. Is it okay to have sex with your former spouse? I'm so tempted because, well, who doesn't like sex? Uh-huh. Would this be a sin on top of the sin of divorce? Would it be okay? Is allowing this going to cause me more pain and the difficulty with moving forward in my life? A lot of people do this. They call it ex-sex. They get divorced and they have sex with each other. It's fairly common, apparently. And it's like, <laughs> if you can't stand someone to the point that you got to divorce them. <laughs> right? If you, but, but do you know I why? It. Because the best sex is married sex. With the person it's, that you know. With someone that you know. That's, that's the reality of it. This, and I was talking to our, in our church. You know, only, only I can talk about losing your virginity on a Sunday morning at our church. So. <clears throat> but I was saying to, to our young people, you know, I watch these movies they all watch, and they always make a big deal out of a one-night stand. And, oh, and I said, they are lying to you. Mm-hmm. Sex for the first time is really, really awkward, clumsy, and a little embarrassing. <laughs> it is not this glorious mm-hmm. thing, all right? Uh, that's the beautiful thing about being married is you're with someone you really get to know. So they miss that part of the sexual contact. Mm-hmm. The problem I have with what she's saying is, <clears throat> um, why? You know, where's the respect for herself? Here's a man who dumped you, who doesn't want to be married to you, and you're going to climb in the sack with him? Mm-hmm. Well, who doesn't enjoy it? Well, well, she says, is this going to cause me more pain and difficulty? Yeah, yes, it probably will. Absolutely. Because you'll just get your heart all tangled up again, and then he'll decide, no, I'm divorced from you. I found somebody else. Why did they get on. divorced in the first place? She's, I asked. She yeah. said, in his words, we don't trust each other. I tried to control him, and I tried to change him. So, therefore. Well, he sounds like a nitwit. Are they Christians? I did not ask yeah, that. I don't know. I met a lady once who said, you know, they, they divorced because their pets didn't get along. Mm-hmm. He had a chihuahua and she had a canary or something, and they couldn't get along, and so they divorced. I mean, how dumb is that? Well, I'm guessing these are because she wanted to know about it, if it's a sin on top of the sin of divorce. So she's talking oh, so sin, so I'm assuming Christian. Well, first of all, yeah, what kind of Christian version is that to get a divorce? I, I don't like you anymore. I mean, you're married to a guy who's just, he's just, just... Sounds very selfish to me. Very, 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 very be selfish. With guy. I wouldn't even let him come over. And now he wants he to. He doesn't have visiting, si- visiting rights with your 
dumb dogs. Well, apparently they do. Visiting rights. Legal visiting rights? I, I read between the lines on that, yes. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Yeah, get the next email. He does have the I got no <laughs> cure for crazy. Just next. So no. Move that's, along that's here. No. Nothing to X-X, see. XX is a no. I, yeah, just no. <laughs> what else you got? Okay, okay. Let me shovel this Dog one to the top here. Dog for the love of heaven. Uh, she says, I've been with a guy for nine months now, and he and we will be married soon. And we got dogs. <laughs> Nothing about dogs. No, no, no. He is my first real boyfriend, uh-huh. uh, but she is like his seventh girlfriend. Okay. And he was married, but got divorced because his wife cheated on him. All right. She's 30, he's 33. The question is, because I have never had any sexual relationship in the past, I've been saving myself for my future husband. Mm-hmm. I can't seem to move on about his sexual relationships in the past. Well, then dump him. What's the matter <laughs> with you people? Listen, 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 ah. listen, listen. I don't know if I can get over, the, you know, it's like the one guy who, who uh, married a, an ex-prostitute. And then he's writing me, huh? I just can't get over her past. <laughs> now you can't get over her past? You knew she was? How about you don't marry her in the first place? That's the point of dating people. You date with people, you get to know them, and you make a decision. Can I do life with this person? You're dating this guy, you're looking at him, I, I feel really uncomfortable with his sexual past. Then dump him and move on. Okay, there's, there's like a little caveat. I don't think it makes a difference, but I'll throw this out there yeah, for right. what it says. She says, that only happens every month around her period time. So apparently <laughs> she gets very emotional, but it's okay with her the rest of the time. And she did say, I asked my pastor's wife, about this and she said that maybe I should reconsider marrying him because these negative thoughts that I have can be a sign I actually cannot handle this relationship even though it only happens once a month <laughs> what do you think Pastor Mark? I think you're the boyfriend have him write me he should dump you <gasps> he should if she's that unstable really <laughs> it just kind of sounded mean it was what does mean, mean? <laughs> <laughs> Both of you at the same time in unison. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> For some reason that sounded mean. That's because it, 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 it was mean. I mean, come on. Should... If he was dating me, I'm dating this girl, but she doesn't know if she can really be with me because I'm not a virgin. She is, and every month she goes a little crazy about it. I would say dump, dump her. her. Yes, you would say that. That's exactly me. what I would say. I know you would. I'm telling her, dump him. You have you're uncomfortable with this. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Go find some single boy that is a virgin and marry him. Although at your age, it's going to be harder and harder to find. Yeah, somebody who hasn't at that age, no. yeah, that's going to be hard. But you don't want to be doing that every month. And it's supposed <laughs> to be in the lovey-dovey phase right now. Yeah. It only will get <laughs> worse, so now, only yeah. struggle probably more and more and more with it. I, I don't know. And who knows, would, when they start having sex, will it just make the whole thing worse? Yeah. I would advise him to move on. I really would. She needs to move on. Don't do this to him. Don't do it to yourself. You're dating. You know what's making you uncomfortable. You're not, your, your pastor's wife is right. Move on. Next. Next. <laughs> Next. Nothing to see here. Move along. Okay. Gosh, I'm trying see, to. He is Judge judy you. I know, Judge Judy. <laughs> I'm trying to really like go where you're not oh, so going to get break. mad about what? things. No, no, I like it mad. It's fun. <laughs> but everyone I keep coming up with is like mad, mad, mad. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be back with more right after this. Download your free Mark Gunger app today to see all of the latest from the world of Mark Gunger. We're back on the Mark Gunger Show answering your emails about love, marriage, and relationships. I know it sounds cruel. I just don't know why people, when they're dating, are really upset about something the other person has or they don't want to be with them. or Just move on. Listen, people, it's so simple. When you're dating someone, you should marry someone you actually like. Mm-hmm. You should marry someone you can't wait to be with. Mm-hmm. That's who you marry. Not someone, I don't know, I have problems with this. That's when you break up. It's not being mean, it's just break it all. Well, the thing is, I'm sure with her too, it's like, well, they like all of this, that, and the other. But yeah, there's just this one thing that I just have trouble Look, with. if you are to the point, you have to write an email to a guy like me. You need to move on because clearly this is really bothering you. Mm -hmm. When you find something that really bothers you, you dump them and move on. I know dump sounds cruel, but you can find a nice way of doing it. But it's still, in essence, you're dumping them. Just move on and don't go a year, one year. Within one year, you should know. 
If you don't absolutely, you should be coming out of your ever loving skin, wanting to just be with each other day and night. I think that's when you're dating and you really love somebody. But these people are dating. Well, I don't like this. I don't like that one. She's too whiny, or he's this, and I, you know, he's, you know, he used to, you know, have chickens, and I don't like chickens, and and uh, I have a dog that hates his parakeet. So they, just break it off and move on. That's why you don't date for extended periods of time. You guys dating for years with some people, you know, you can't stand them. You're just crazy. Honestly, and that, and you say, "Well, I like him, but he doesn't like me." That's that's what you know. If he won't ask you after a year, after a year, he's still not. Let's just keep dating. Then you dump him because obviously he, in the back of his mind, thinks you're still not quality material. Don't waste years of your life being with somebody that you don't really want to be with. Then you're going to marry him, and then you're stuck with him, and then everything turns into hell. Not worth it. Just move on. Unless you live on a desert island and he's the only other man on that island. And yeah. then I'd say get off the island. Go to, <laughs> come back to the mainland. Swim, <laughs> swim, swim to the next one. <laughs> swim for your life. All right. Okay, 24-year-old guy writing. He says, the situation I need help with is I have a strong desire for a wife and a strong sexual desire that is becoming distracting. <laughs> Thank God. It is distracting. That means you're a normal human being. D- you, they said, how old is he? Does 24. 24. You should have been like that at 18. Well, maybe it's been since 18. I mean, at 18, you should have so much testosterone running through your body, you can't think straight. Like this guy over here. They ought to be going crazy. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I don't know how they well. He's 28, 29, 32, and is still single. Well, maybe they don't I, have it. No, look, I'm thinking, them. if you can wait that long, Keep stay waiting. single. Keep Just waiting. stay single. Clearly, you don't have much testosterone. You're supposed to be going crazy. Although a lot of these guys... Uh, mm-hmm. Are masturbating and all kinds of stuff, playing all these stupid games, uh, you know. But a normal guy who doesn't get in all that stupid behavior will tend to marry young because he's going crazy. All right, he oh. says it is distracting me on my school life, my running my small business, and especially my spiritual life. I'll find myself sometimes see a cute girl in church, thinking how I can ask her out. I have teachers, preachers, and other spiritual leaders telling me that it's either the devil trying to distract me from what my pastor is saying because he knows the sermon is about what the sermon is about and how it will help me grow spiritually, or they tell him that his heart is not right with God because my desire for a wife has become more important in my life than growing in my relationship with God and I need to get right with him. Uh, That's what they're telling him. I answer for you. Go to a different church. Go to a different church. If you're going to a church that you as a young man says, man, I like pretty girls, I'm really distracted, and they say that's the devil, you're hanging with crazy people. What you need to do is stand up in the middle of the service and just start going, ah, and run out of there and get as far away from them as you can. Or just decide not to go on next Sunday. No, I think do more dramatically. Think of how messed up you would be if you took that advice. Oh my God. Because then when you get married... married and you have sexual desire. Now it's you're just, just trying devil. to decide: is this well? Is this normal? Is this the devil? It's just the devil. It's just the devil. Dude, you're going to a church of crazy people. All right, they are. Wait, there's a technical term for uh, no crazy. That is the technical term. Get out of there! Quit going to a church that's telling you, as a normal man, that your desire to get married means it's the devil. His church also tells him, get ready to get mad, that God will see when you are ready and will reveal the girl to you. Run! Get out of there! They're crazy! Reveal a girl, he says. He sees this girl. He sees the girl. I like her. And then they tell him it's just the devil. (laughs) They tell him it's the devil. Man, you in a jacked up church. You're in a church of the jacked up people. (laughs) Get away from them. They're crazy. Good night. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with you. (laughs) <laughs> You're a normal 24 year old Nothing wrong with that advice But nothing wrong Move with you Move to Green Bay, Wisconsin And come to my church If you're not going crazy Wanting a girl I'm going to tell you You're full of the devil <laughs> <laughs> Go get a girl Quit going crazy Get out of your church Good night Alright, let's take a break We'll be back with more Right after this Want more of Mark? Visit markgunger.com There you will find Everything that Mark has to offer Do I dare let myself 
Sit a while and ponder. The music of Michael O'Brien. Check out his music at michaelo.org. What do you got? Okay, it's a girl writing, kind of general dating question. She wants to know, what advice would you... Is she in the military? Because you can't date generals if you're you're like an enlisted person. Right. General dating. No fraternizing. No fraternizing. Is that what you're talking about? No. Oh. She says, what advice would you give for someone who has never dated before and who's in their 20s? (laughs) Also, you're shaking his head going, oh, lame. (laughs) Although, before when you're talking about the two glory to... Overlook offense. Uh-huh. Like every time I hear that, I keep thinking like they must just had offense. Tall fences. Mm-hmm. She was going <laughs> to overlook, overlook offense. offense. Looking over the fence. Offense. See, he's yeah. lame as I am. You are both. Right. Right. You're I both kept lame. mine inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Yes. <laughs> he held on to his stupid. Yes. I yes. show my stupid to the world. Yes, you do. All right. Okay. Advice for someone who's never dated before and is in their early twenties. What mm-hmm. questions should that person ask on their first date or second date? What should they be looking out for? Do you think women should take the lead in initiating conversation if they are interested in a guy, or does that come off as too pushy? Um, dating advice. So, what was the first question? <laughs> what advice do you have for someone who's never dated before and is in their twenties? Uh, relax. <laughs> They're already overthinking it. What was the next question? What question should a person ask on their first or second date, and what should they be looking out for? I think, you know, uh, just general questions. Try to get to know the person. That's what she wants to know. Yeah. What kinds of questions do you oh, I don't know. What shoes, Who are you? What shoes do you, size shoes yeah, what do you sh- wear? What shoes you wear? Have you ever been in prison? Uh, if, <laughs> if I Google your name, am I going to find you in the FBI's most, most wanted, wanted list? You know, find out questions about him. At some point, you'll need to have some serious questions with him. Uh, actually, let me encourage you uh, to uh, check out my book, my new book for dating singles. Where is it? Here you go. We're looking for the book. Here it is. Being Found. Okay, this book, <clears throat> a, Cr- a Christian Woman's Guide to Marriage. All the conceivable questions you might have about how to date, how long to date, what kinds of questions to ask, when to ask them, that kind of thing, can be found in this book. Go to markgunger.com and check it out because it'll be very helpful to you if you live outside the United States. You can download it because it's too expensive to ship it. It'll cost you more to ship it than to to buy the book. But you can get the download onto your Kindles or iPads, and you can read it that way. Otherwise, get the book, and uh, and we answer these questions. About the only serious question that I ask uh, women to ask at some point when you're dating a guy is just ask about his porn habits. Because if he's a guy who's into porn and masturbating, you don't want to marry into that. Uh, and that could be a mess. But other than that, I talk about, you know, everything's fair game. Everything's fair game. Well, we've been talking on the show all day today. Mm-hmm. You know, there's stuff you don't like about them, you know. You're not going to know. You're saying, well, how do I do in the first two or three? You may not know for the first two or three days. First of all, you don't know that he wants to date you the second time. Mm-hmm. You may not want to date him the second time. Right. You know, he gives you a hug or you shake his hand and he smells and you go, ugh, ugh. You know, you don't want to do that or uh, he burps. <laughs> <laughs> While he's eating dinner in a public place. He has a shoe fetish. He's got, he likes to wear real sparkly shoes. Like sparkly some, jackets. It's like some people I know around this table. I mean, whatever it is. That tells bad jokes. Tells bad jokes, lame jokes. <laughs> Did you just get done with the magic routine? <laughs> no? Okay. Just. This is just the way that you go uh, about it. Seriously, that. I look like a Las Vegas uh, magician half the time. So <laughs> He's got those extra pockets for doves. And yeah. <laughs> That's what I need. So, yeah, just everything. Just find out about him. Ask questions. See if, he has, if, see if he's curious about you. He might just ask questions about you. If he's the kind of guy who sits there and doesn't talk and you have to do all the talking and that creeps you out, then don't date him again. I mean, just everything, everything, dear, is fair game. So check out the book, Being Found. Should a woman initiate? I believe absolutely yes. Not too pushy. There's a bunch of psycho crazy Christians going around who for decades have been telling girls, oh, don't initiate. Oh, he has to pursue you. Don't look at him. Uh, and they quote the Bible and stuff. And they say, you want to be like Ruth and Boaz? Ruth and Boaz. But well, these people don't even read the Bible. Read Ruth and Boaz. I go through it in this book with you. Ruth is the one who chased Boaz. It is Ruth who asks Boaz to marry her. Boaz didn't ask her. Boaz wasn't pursuing her. But it was a great love story, and it's in the Bible. It has its own book, the Book of Ruth. The Book of Ruth, its own book on a woman who chased down a guy. Not too pushy, apparently. 
So I went to these Christians, you know, no, no, don't, you know, don't pursue and, you know, don't make eye contact and wait for him to chase you. And, and then some of these real nitwits, you know, make sure he goes to your father first but has permission before he dates you, as if we were living in the 1800s. Man! There's one, it's the most, no wonder we have so many single girls in our churches. Because if you're listening to stupid stuff like that, no wonder you're still single. They're a little wackadoo. They are. Or it's like these guys that go to this church where, you know, if you feel attracted to a woman, you're, you're, it's the devil. Mm-hmm. Y'all, some of y'all need to go to some new churches. Get away from these people. For heaven's sakes, there's a lot of wonderful churches out there that are not crazy, mm-hmm. that understand life and really understand the Bible. Anyway, you want to be passionate about God and everything else? Oh, should a Christian woman pursue a guy? According to the Bible, with his own book, Ruth, the answer is an absolute affirmative. Yes, you do. Quit listening to all these people. <sighs> Who, where, where do you think this comes from? I mean, where do they make Be- this up? Because we just keep hearing more and more le- levels of crazy. Wa- because they got these ideas. Christians have this idealistic nonsense in their heads. And they want to build something. And, and they want to teach on it. And they want to be insightful as some new kind of a teacher. And, you know, oh, this idea of this old-fashioned 1800s where a woman would never look at a man and never kind of... Look first, you go to... Okay, that Make sounds sure very romantic. That just it doesn't work in today. And it's certainly not biblical. And saying things like sex is the highest form of worship and, you know, a woman should always do what her husband says even if he totally ignores her and neglects her. All these insane ideas. These people have, I know this is going to sound bad, but a lot of Christian teaching about marriage, it actually makes a marriage worse. It actually makes Mm -hmm. it worse Mm -hmm. because they are over jacking this thing up and trying to make it into something that it's not. And then the people come along and say, oh, marriage is about spiritual intimacy. Really? Because the Bible doesn't talk about that. Apparently, physical intimacy and emotional intimacy is so easy, we got to give them a new word. So they come up with these, oh, and it sounds so cool, and it sounds so spiritual. Oh, yes, spiritual. I want that too. And all the people, oh, yeah, we need emotional intimacy. I don't even know what they're talking about. And yet all this stuff and the Holy Spirit should be filling the room and worshiping Jesus when you're having sex. <laughs> What is the matter with these people? And these girls should never look at a guy and never pay attention to him and let him pursue her. I tell you what, if a guy I'm trying to date a girl and she never looks at me, I ain't dating her. Well, you would think she has no interest in you. I think she's got scabies or something. Scabies. I, don't, I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> she's got a disease. Well, because all y'all so, men are so like high on the rejection thing that if she's not giving you some kind of a signal, you're probably not going to go there, right? Am I right? Absolutely right. Most guys won't even date a girl unless you get some kind of signal from her that, hey, you can take a shot at this. Yeah. Otherwise, right? they run for the hills. If you're constantly sitting off in corners and not talking to boys. No eye contact. Waiting for him to pursue you and stuff. You know? and, and again, Christians teach this stuff. I feel so bad. There's so many single girls today. The very reason they're single is because they've listened to such bad advice. Well, what's your advice? Go get my book, Being Found. I lay it all out here in very strong detail about how to approach this. If you'll do this right, you'll succeed. It's just that simple. If you don't, you're going to fail. And you're going to get all jacked up. You're going to wind up marrying people you can't stand. And then you're going to be wondering, oh, why did God have this do this to me? Why did God tell me to marry? Well, first of all, God didn't tell him to marry you. You're making all this stuff up in your head. Quit being goofy. Quit over-spiritualizing. Quit. Look at what the Bible actually, I'll show you in this book, what the Bible actually teaches about how to find a spouse. How about we do it that way? Let's do it God's way instead of all this goofiness. And get out of these crazy churches. All right, see ya. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle.